Hi, it's Dwyer in 2020. Uh, thanks for continuing on with me. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me say, there's a group in boxing. They're in the shadows, right? They aren't really known. You know the promoters. You know some of the managers. You don't know the matchmakers. You don't know the people leaning over and whispering into a fighter's ear about what fights to take, right? One of the reasons why mandatory fights, the mandatory contender is such an important concept is that's the one time that a sanctioning body can force a fighter to fight someone who might not fit that champion style, might actually be a difficult opponent. Well, we're going to throw a flag. In fact, we're going to throw a red flag right here on boxing, right? Because the matchmakers really have gotten so much control over the sport that you're not really being given the very best, right? The best fights are being avoided by fighters who understand the need to vacate titles or to sign long-term deals, multiple fight deals with an opponent who might be well-suited for them. Let's take a look at the heavyweight division. Now, I believe the best heavyweight in history, certainly an argument can be made, is Muhammad Ali in the 1966-67 to 67 time period. Right? The Ali who beats Cleveland Williams, Ernie Terrell, and then Zora Fali had hand speed that I don't see in today's heavyweight division, had legs that I don't see in today's heavyweight division. I want you to look at the Cleveland Williams fight. It's on YouTube. Just Google it from the Astrodome in the 60s, right? When the Astrodome was one of the world's wonders. And you're going to notice that Ali's sense of timing was such that he didn't even have to raise his hands for defense. He's just moving his upper body. Williams just can't hit it, right? But if you look at those three fights, you'll notice that part of it was a magician's trick. Part of it was a matchmaking trick, wasn't it? Because Ali's in his mid-twenties, and he's fighting guys who are much older than him, right? That's the type Ali liked to fight. Guys who were older than him, couldn't handle his young legs, couldn't handle his young hand speed, right? So granted, I'm not saying any of these guys weren't deserving, right? Cleveland Williams had won a boxing's classic fights against Sonny Liston. Right? Ernie Terrell, I believe, held a share of the heavyweight title. By the way, it's the Terrell fight. When Ali starts yelling at him, what's my name, during the fight, because before the fight, Terrell wouldn't call him Muhammad Ali, kept calling him Cassius Clay. Right? That's the Ali we're talking about. But understand, Ali knew that he was fighting older men, slower men, men made to showcase his fast hands, his movement, his combinations. So today, we've gone from a blown opportunity. You can blame whoever you want, right? We've gone from a blown opportunity where Anthony Joshua with several belts and Deontay Wilder with the WBC belt talked about unifying the title at heavyweight, right? Folks, there was a lot of talk Nothing happened in the ring, right? <laughs> Think about it. A lot of talk, nothing happened in the ring. 
right? Eric Melita somehow is able to fight both guys. The guys couldn't fight each other. We've gone from that, right, to Anthony Joshua recently talking about how he might give up a belt rather than face Alexander Usyk. Now, let me be real focused here and direct for a moment. Understand, while I'm a big-time boxing fan, that's not my core constituency. My loyalty here, at least the intended loyalty of this YouTube channel, lies with gamblers. We're looking for an edge on the casino. Let me give you a simple edge. Just keep track of it. That edge is to take Alexander Usyk in heavyweight fights. Understand, the guys who would give him the most trouble are outside the division. Right? Maris Breedis would give him problems. Over the last 18 to 24 months here online, I talked about what I viewed as a coming invasion from lighter weights into the heavyweight division. I even made a video here where I talked about how I felt Canelo has an excellent shot on Deontay Wilder. I know people think I'm crazy. Okay, fine. But understand, the fighters in the era themselves know they need protection. Right? So Anthony Joshua, who knows he blew it? Right? He knows he blew it. He knows he and Wilder blew it. Let's put it that way. Anthony Joshua has gone from trying to imitate Lennox Lewis. Let's be real here. Lewis is a much better fighter than Joshua on his best day, right? Lennox Lewis was undisputed at heavyweight, right? We need to separate out words like unified, okay, I have a couple of titles, to undisputed. I have all the major titles. Anthony Joshua, while imitating Vladimir Klitschko, Another fighter, I believe Lewis would have disposed of, but that's another story. We'll save that for another video. Wanted to unify the heavyweight title, knowing, he knows it today, knowing that he had an underdeveloped back foot game. Knowing that he doesn't have the hand speed to compete with an Ali or a Mike Tyson, if you want to get into history. Right? You saw him against Andy Ruiz. Clearly, he didn't have the hand speed to compete with Ruiz. You saw Ruiz's big flaw. Well, one of them, right? Ruiz has no back foot game. Right? Ruiz has slow feet. By the way, let me just point out that losing 10, 15 pounds wouldn't have helped him suddenly develop a lot of foot speed. Right? So you saw Joshua running around the ring. Staying away from Andy Ruiz because Joshua the puncher understood he couldn't have exchanges with Ruiz. He didn't have the defense to hang with Andy Ruiz. Right? Let's, let's just call it out. So here you have Usyk who Southpaw can fight righty. Right? Many of you objected when I said that Today, Deontay Wilder, a five-year, folks, the reign's been five years, a five-year heavyweight champ, likely gets in the Hall of Fame. Many of you objected. You said, look, this guy doesn't have the talent to be a Hall of Famer. Understand, today, Usyk, Olympic gold medalist, undisputed cruiserweight champion, undisputed cruiserweight champion. Right? I would argue that Usyk's a Hall of Famer. This is that Terrence Crawford post-undisputed life where the guy moves up a weight class and then decides to start taking guys out. Now think about it. A cruiserweight has entered the heavyweight division. Right, He's the mandatory for one of these belts for Anthony Joshua. You know, Usyk wants to fight Joshua. Right? That's, that's that mindset. 
right? It's okay. I'm in the heavyweight division. <laughs> I'm the mandatory. I'll take the fight. I want to be champ. I need to fight the champ. I'll stand in line if if this champ is going to keep me waiting while he fights Kubrat Pulev, a much older fighter. I'll just I'll just wait until my mandatory slot comes up and then I'll I'll fight the champ. I'm willing to fight the champ in the UK. Right? And you know the rest. The champ who knows who knows that he's still developing skills? Who understands that his fight against Joseph Parker was close? Who understands that he can't stay in the pocket against Anthony Joshua? Right, that champ who was talking about unifying the title now is talking about giving up a title. By the way, career-wise, it's the right move. Right? Because he wants to continue in this world of illusion of holding a belt against other champs who have problems. Let's talk about a champ who has problems. You know, the only reason we're talking about a rematch here between Fury and Wilder is because, let's be blunt, Fury got sloppy in the 12th round. Right? Understand, if, if Fury's not close enough to Wilder to get hit by right hands, <laughs> if, he, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't get dropped, and then, fortunately for us, Jack Reese was the referee. Right? Reese didn't panic. Reese understood. This guy was literally minutes away from winning the fight. Right? Reese did a 10 count allowed him the opportunity to use the 10 seconds the rules allow, and Fury got off the canvas. It's only because of that 12th round that we have the rematch. Now, all I'm saying to you, and I know this upsets a lot of people, but if Fury, on his third fight back from rehab, after fighting two guys, most viewers probably can't name right now, they're that forgettable. Right? If a rusty fury after, what, years out of the ring? <laughs> years out of the ring and two fights where he's just getting his feet wet is able to go 12 rounds and has to lose the last round badly for that fight to be a draw against Deontay Wilder, why does anyone think, since Wilder certainly hasn't knocked down anybody with a punch other than a straight right hand since that fight? In other words, you haven't seen the Wilder fight, where suddenly Wilder's a different person, and you say to yourself, well, I, you know, there's a part of Wilder I didn't know existed here. Since it's the same Deontay Wilder with the same game plan, right? Since you know in your heart Luis Ortiz is winning most of the rounds, dare I say all of the rounds, against Wilder before he gets hit with, guess what, a right hand. Right? He has his hand up like this. Wilder comes inside of it. One wonders what happens if a Fury decides to have his hand up like this. Right? To, to not allow a punch to get inside. To actually have the glove up. Right? It's just a matter of defense and positioning. Have the glove up where the chin is protected. And you have a hard time hitting the guy in the head. If Tyson Fury shows up in shape, isn't thinking about wrestling, is actually thinking about boxing and winning a heavyweight title, how is the Fury Wilder rematch even competitive? Let me go one step further. Now, I know it's risky. It's high risk. Right? Turning to your trainer and saying, hey, you know what? Right before one of the biggest fights of my career, which is just a few weeks away, I'm going to replace you. <laughs> right? That's high risk. You know, it's just a shame that he didn't replace Davidson with Freddie Roach because Freddie Roach was in his corner with Davidson and Freddie Roach was the one who said the obvious. He said, hey, why don't you go inside? Now think about it. Freddie Roach wanted a guy in his third fight back 
to come inside on an unbeaten multi-year reigning heavyweight champion. Right? Why? Because Wilder's that uninspiring. Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach knows boxing, doesn't he? Freddie Roach has seen some great heavyweight fighters. Freddie Roach used to train under Eddie Futch, who used to train Joe Fraser, Riddick Bowe. Right? Freddie's seen some excellent fighters. Freddie, according to folklore, all of these, you know, 24-7 fights, and then you, you know, see Freddie Roach is training Manny Pacquiao, and he's talking boxing. Freddie Roach is a guy who, by reputation, is looking at films of old fights. Well, let's just say Freddie was in the corner, and you just got the feeling that Freddie, watching a few rounds up close of Deontay Wilder, thought that his rusty fighter should go for the KO early. <laughs> In other words, a few rounds pass, and then Freddie's like, okay, well, my guy's clearly winning these rounds. Obviously, the judges thought so too, right? My guy's winning these rounds. Why does it my guy go in there and close the show? Could you imagine if Tyson Fury were fighting Mike Tyson or Lennox Lewis? What are the odds of Freddie Roach from the corner saying, hey, you know what? You know, just after a few rounds, saying, hey, why don't you go inside? <laughs> why don't you go inside and try to hurt Mike Tyson? You and I know that wouldn't happen. Tyson's a different level of champion. Right? That's just a different level of champion. Isn't it? Right? Freddie probably against Prime Ali wouldn't even tell his fighter, hey, try to get inside at Ali because they would understand. The foot speed gap is just too major. <laughs> right? Good luck finding Ali to get inside on him. Against Deontay Wilder. Freddie Roach thought, Google it. Freddie Roach thought that Tyson Fury should have been more aggressive. Shouldn't have been on his back foot all the time. Should have mixed it up. Come inside. He thought Wilder was open. Why? Because here's a secret. Wilder needs a little bit of space, doesn't he, to throw that right hand. That right hand is always up top, isn't it? Isn't there a matchmaker off camera who's whispering to Deontay Wilder, and Wilder has some great people around him, Shelly Finkel, some others, who are whispering to Wilder that, hey, you're 6'7", you want to fight a guy who's tall like you. Right, six three, six four, six five, six nine in Fury's case. Because you're a head hunter. Don't really have a good right to the body. Don't really have a good left to the body. Not, not an accomplished body puncher, not accomplished in the pocket. Right? That's not your game. You don't want to fight a Mike Tyson type. A guy who's gonna get low. Think about it. Get low. In other words, if your power is a right hand up top, do you have that same power? Dropping your punch a foot or a foot and a half. Keep in mind, too, the problem with fighting these shorter guys who might be able to bounce, who might be able to fight angles. Usyk can fight short, by the way. He can duck. Right? Usyk, of course, is Ph.D. level. You have to figure out, gee, is he a southpaw here? Is he a righty here? Is he riddling me with straight punches? Is he hitting me with hooks? Usyk, of course, it goes without saying, is two-handed. Right, two-handed. Usyk has a back foot game, too. Right? You understand that that's not the kind of fighter Wilder wants to fight. He wants a guy who is tall, who he could hit, who is silly enough in the 12th round, three minutes away from winning the title, of actually being close to his right hand. Right? Somebody please give Tyson Fury a tape of Pernell Whitaker from the 12th round of his fight against Chavez. Pernell's outside. Chavez tries to come inside. Pernell backs away. Pernell waves at him. 
right? Purnell literally waves at him. Purnell knew what happened to his boy, Meldrick Taylor. Purnell's attitude was, hey, I've, I've done the work. Purnell waves at him, moves away. I would have given Purnell the round just on that, right? Ring generalship is part of scoring. I'd say, who's controlling the spacing? <laughs> then I'd see a guy who's looked dominant back away and just say, hey, this is the 12th round. You're not going to touch me, hey, buddy. Right? Uh, judges disagreed in San Antonio. I think that's where the fight was, or El Paso, someplace like that. Judges disagreed. Call that Pernell Whitaker fight a draw. Had Tyson Fury in that 12th round against Deontay Wilder just walked away from Wilder's right hand. Right? Waved at Wilder. I understand it's a little bit risky. Right? Oscar De La Hoya, in a sense, is doing just that. Figuratively speaking, against Felix Trinidad in those last few rounds, had Wilder stayed away, Wilder would have beaten Deontay. Excuse me, had Fury stayed away, he would have won that fight. So understand what's going on here. Somebody has whispered in the ear of Deontay Wilder and in the ear of Tyson Fury, if you two guys sign for multiple fights, we have political cover. You can actually avoid Usyk. Right? Fury's the lineal. He doesn't have a mandatory. He's not running to fight Usyk, even though I believe that fight would determine the best in the heavyweight division right now. Let's just be realistic here. Fury, Usyk. Right? I do think there's a scenario where Fury wins that fight if he's popping a good jab and if he looks like he looked in his fight against Vladimir Klitschko. But I'm a Fury fan and I can tell you I haven't seen that Tyson Fury on the comeback trail yet. Right? I didn't give Deontay Wilder much of a chance in either Luis Ortiz fight. He beat Luis Ortiz twice, right? I believe Ortiz had the formula for him, but knockouts matter in boxing, right? And after looking great in the rematch, he got stopped. It is what it is. I salute the champion. For those of you who don't feel he's a Hall of Famer, I think those fights are very important. I think Ortiz is one of the few guys at heavyweight right now who would give Usyk a tough fight. I don't expect that fight to happen, right? Joseph Parker wants a shot on Usyk. I think Parker's one of the division's best athletes. I think Usyk knows it. I don't expect that fight to happen, right? I think Usyk understands that he likely beats a Dylan White, right? I know this is not what the public is thinking, and that's fine. This is one man's opinion here online. Right? But just understand, Joshua wants no part of Usyk. I'm expecting the abdication of that title. I don't believe Deontay Wilder wants any part of Usyk. So I think Wilder will sign, if, if he could, he would sign to fight Fury a few more times. Then he'd want to fight Anthony Joshua, knowing, knowing, that he doesn't have to deal with a slick cruiserweight who, if he bends his knees and fights low and stays on the right side of, stays on the left side of Wilder, would neutralize Wilder's straight right hand. And that Wilder as a boxer really doesn't have other tools, at least not other tools on an elite level, right? Revisit the Audley Harrison fight. You're going to notice he's windmilling. Revisit the Lakovic fight. You're going to notice he's windmilling. Right? This is after landing big shots with that right hand. Right? You don't get the feeling that Wilder is surgical. So to the gamblers, I'll just say this bluntly. You're looking for an edge on the casino. That edge is named Alexander Usyk. Right? We've been in a tall man, flat-footed era. 
right? Wilder, flat-footed, relies on power, doesn't want fights to go to the scorecard. Right? Hand speed here really hasn't been at a premium in this era. It just hasn't. Understand, Tyson Fury moves better than Wilder or Joshua, but the fighters who've given Fury the hardest fights are cruiserweight types, right? I believe Fury in an interview said the hardest fight he had was Steve Cunningham, former cruiserweight champion. Right? Cunningham has him in trouble in that fight. Fury, when he gets in trouble, has to come inside. Let me also say, and I know people don't want to hear this, but it's a referee's decision right now that has Fury still being viewed as the lineal champion. Otto Wallen has him almost bleeding to death, it looks like. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Right? How the ref let that bloodbath continue is a mystery to me. Even the referees from former middleweight champion Vito Walterfurbo's fights probably would have stopped that volid fight. Right? Fury's cut looked bad. What? The ref looks in the corner on Fury. He's just seen Fury bleed for like two and a half minutes of a round. Then they go to the corner and look at the film of that fight. The wound is gaping. Right? The ref's already seen it bleeding. So then the ref goes over there and is thinking, okay, well, how bad is this cut really? Folks, that cut looked bad. Right? It looked bad. They let that fight continue. That's the only reason why he has his title. Right? Vitaly Klitschko understands he had a similar cut against Lennox Lewis. They stopped that fight, <laughs> right? I mean, you you could lose a fight off cuts. So Tyson Fury's taking no chances. He wants a guy who he knows he's a better boxer than. That's why he signed up for the rematch with Wilder. Okay, I'll accept the rematch. But before there's a third fight, let me just say, if you're the kind of fighter who needs to fight the big fights, if you're truly looking for legacy, as some of these guys claim to have been when they were talking about unification, right, before fight talks broke down, right, if you're the guy who, like Vitaly Klitschko, he sees Derek Chisora get robbed, in a fight against Robert Hellenius, right? Chisorus robbed. So who does the champ pick as his next opponent? It wasn't Robert Hellenius. He actually picked Derek Chisora as his next opponent. If you're that guy, then the big names, the names at least we think are big, right? Anthony Joshua, who officially is one and one against Andy Ruiz, right? Let's be real. He's not going to fight Ruiz again. If he does, he'll be running like he did the second fight. He's not going to sit in the pocket and say, okay, look, here are the adjustments I've made to take you out in the pocket. He's not that guy. You know that, right? The big three are Joshua, Wilder, Fury, folks, here's a prediction for 2020. All three of them are going to avoid Usyk for the entire calendar year. They need for Usyk to slow down. That's just the way it is. They saw Usyk beat Murat Gassiev, a two-handed guy, very dangerous. Is going to be dangerous at heavyweight. They saw Usyk beat Breedis, uh, Maris Breedis. They understand this guy is too talented. Right? If I said here online Usyk is a Hall of Famer, people would agree with me. I wouldn't get the blowback that I got saying Deontay Wilder, based on a five-year reign, is a Hall of Famer, even though 
I'm sure the public understands they can't name a guy who's been a champion for five years who hasn't gotten in the Hall of Fame. A heavyweight champion, right? Let's understand, there's the heavyweight division and then there's everything else, right? So, at heavyweight, you're being hoodwinked right now, right? I do believe Wilder eventually gets in the Hall of Fame. I do believe Fury is the best heavyweight on the planet, right? The biggest challenge he has at heavyweight, the biggest challenge, would be Usyk, not Wilder, not Joshua, right? Joshua, Mr. I want to be undisputed, right? Doesn't want to fight Usyk. Folks, here's a prediction. You'll never see him fight Usyk, no matter how much money they offer him, because he understands. Just like Wilder understands, there's certain types of fighters he's not going to do well against. Right? Usyk is a master. You know, it would help Usyk's cause if in his next fight against some nondescript fighter, he gets dropped a couple of times. Then maybe these guys will have the courage to try to fight him. So from this seat, I'm just going to watch what happens with Usyk. Right? When Usyk fights for the heavyweight title, and it won't be against any of these big three, in my opinion, to me, that's going to be easy money. I think Usyk is that skilled. Again, understand he's been undisputed. Understand how rough the cruiserweight division was. And this guy beat guys like unbeaten Marat Garcia, for crying out loud. Right? Roll the tape on the Maris Breedis fight against Diamond Boy, um, Spanish heavyweight who got beaten by uh, Vitaly Klitschko. Right? And you're going to see one of the classic KOs of all time. Right? The cruiserweight division is faster than the heavyweight division. More importantly, they're more skilled than the heavyweight division. You've had big clunky guys, right? Big clunky guys and guys out of rehab, right? Who have ruled the roost. That era is coming to a close. Don't be fooled by the propaganda, right? Usyk is a serious threat. Anthony Joshua will be vacating that title, in my opinion, because he understands that he has to. It's only because Andy Ruiz just doesn't have the center of gravity, just doesn't have the foot speed, and can't get out of his construct, can't just run over to Joshua like Golovkin ran over to Kell Brook, just can't break the construct and run over to corner him on the ropes. It's only because Ruiz just needs to fight at a certain pace that we're here celebrating Joshua's reacquisition of the heavyweight crown, right? Joshua himself knows his back foot game is not A+. plus. In the pocket, he's not A+. plus. Right? Very accurate power puncher. Is getting a jab that's approaching Vladimir Klitschko level. Is still a work in progress. Will never have the hand speed to deal with the hand speed of Usyk. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If I had a gun in my head, I would pick Tyson Fury over Usyk, right? If we ever get best against best at heavyweight, right? But let's just say I'm going to have to see Fury continue to improve, continue to get back to where he is, right? That fight is within the range of variance. Right? If Fury's not on his A-game for that fight, Usyk could conceivably beat him. 
That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.